Hello everyone, Creative Fun here back with another Mirage tutorial and this time we are going to take a comprehensive look at the autopilot system in the Mirage 2000. Uh, so let's get started right away here. The first thing I want to bring your attention to is the autopilot panel here on the left side of the cockpit. This area here is the buttons for activating and deactivating the autopilot. We're also later going to use this little area here as well, uh, but we're going to get back to that one. So these are the two panels that you need to be familiar with in dealing with autopilot. Uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit about the autopilot in the Mirage 2000C. First, the, the autopilot in the Mirage is uh, fairly simple and basic, and has one master mode with uh, three additional sub-modes. So we're going to first take a look at the master mode and see how that works, and I'm going to go over and take a closer look on the three sub-modes that are implemented in the uh, Mirage 2000C uh, module by Rasbam. And I'm just going to activate autopilot by pushing this button here, the green one, and as you can see, uh, once it's turned on, uh, the uh, aircraft is now flying via autopilot. Uh, please have a look at the HUD display here. I'm going to turn it on and off again. Uh, if you check the HUD here, two new symbols would have appeared. I'm going to start a turn here so we can see the second symbol. One second here. So there, we're now flying by autopilot in a small climb. And uh, the two symbols that has appeared is first this is star here. This is basically where the autopilot is trying to fly the aircraft and it's going to try to put the heading indicator on this star. The second symbol is uh, this small chevron up here and it indicates the heading the aircraft is trying to fly to. In this case we're doing a constant turn so the heading will keep moving here to indicate that the aircraft is trying to keep turning. This is extremely useful uh, for you to be able to look around and uh, push other buttons in the cockpit uh, without worrying too much about the aircraft itself. If I want to disable the autopilot, there's a couple of ways to doing this. The easiest thing of course is just to push this button here again and the autopilot is disabled. I'm going to enable it again now. The throttle uh, is uh, not controlled by the autopilot so I have to control the speed of the aircraft myself. If I want to quickly uh, disengage the autopilot, all you have to do is to push the level, uh, sorry, not the level, the flight stick, um, hard to left or right or up and down. This will cause the autopilot to disengage. As you can see now when I did it, the autopilot uh, switched the mode here to the autopilot standby mode. This indicates that the autopilot is now in the standby mode. I'm going to re-enable, uh, turn on and off the autopilot. So let's turn a little bit here and let's enable the autopilot. The other way to turn off the autopilot is the autopilot standby button. And this I have uh, bound to my flight stick on my HOTAS. And I recommend uh, if you're going to use this mode uh, that you also bound it, bind it to uh, either a button on your keyboard or your HOTAS. I'm now going to push, uh, push the standby button for the autopilot and it goes into a standby mode. As long as I keep the button pressed and hold down I can readjust my aircraft to whatever angle I want and then if I release the button the autopilot immediately activates. Another couple of things to be aware of uh, is that the autopilot is fairly advanced in terms of understanding how you're flying. So if you activate the autopilot at an unreasonable angle or position of the aircraft, the autopilot will refuse to activate. For example, if I'm upside down and going down and try to activate the autopilot now, you're going to see it refuses to activate. No matter what I do, the autopilot will not activate. I'm going to just turn up here so I don't crash and die. It will be embarrassing if I do that during the tutorial. So there we go, we're back again. Um, so as you can see, if I put the aircraft at uh, what the autopilot consider a reasonable request or a reasonable angle, uh, the, aircraft, uh, the autopilot will refuse to engage and wait until you can move the aircraft back to a more reasonable angle, uh, roll angle or climb or descent, and then the autopilot will activate again. Uh, the second mode, or the first sub-mode I would say, for the autopilot is the altitude hold. And it does exactly what it is. Uh, the name implies. It holds your altitude. If I activate it, it will remember the altitude I was at when I pushed the button and align the aircraft to that altitude. As you can see now, the star is firmly placed here on the uh, 
uh, hor hor uh, horizontal line and it will maintain a level of flight. The really useful thing with this feature is if I turn off the autopilot and commence a turn, activate the autopilot and then activate the altitude hold, it will not maintain the turn roll angle but it will not neither descend or climb it will maintain the altitude around now 13,000 feet this is perfect if you're looking around for ground targets you can just uh, place your aircraft in a controlled turn activate the autopilot and then you're free to look around without worrying about the aircraft crashing itself I want to show you one more uh, neat little thing with the autopilot this works both in the autopilot master mode on and autopilot altitude hold mode so first I'm just going to activate the autopilot and the autopilot hold and as I said this works with both modes but you're able to adjust your heading without turning off your autopilot using the trim left and trim right buttons which I have bound to my joystick you can if I press for example trim left this little uh, chevron starts moving and the aircraft then turns to the heading I've decided. And right now it's turning to heading 216. Uh, if you notice there, if I press first when I press, it moves slowly, but the longer I hold down the trim button, it moves faster. Uh, if we move down and check on the HSI here, we have a green arrow. This green arrow works the same way as the little chevron marker here. So if I hold down the trim left, this green arrow will start moving to the left and the longer I hold down the faster it moves and I can now set the heading I want the aircraft to tr fly in for example let's say I want to go in heading 150 I will simply just set the heading with the green arrow using the trim buttons and the aircraft will turn to that heading and this works both in alt uh, alt uh, master mode on and uh, the altitude hold mode I'm going to disengage the autopilot now and we're going to look at the second sub-mode. Uh, the second sub-mode on the autopilot is uh, still, I believe, not fully implemented or fully working as intended because it's a little bit finicky. According to the manual, you're supposed to simply be able to activate this mode by pressing it but the button, but it will refuse to activate. So uh, after a lot of trial and error, I found a way to activate the mode. Uh, first, let me explain what the uh, mode is all about. Uh, it's called the altitude select mode and what it does it allows you to activate to set a certain altitude and have the aircraft climb or descend to that altitude and then level out in theory and uh, in theory it also very it also sounds like a very good concept that means that you can set an altitude just activate the autopilot and the autopilot will just get you to that altitude very good right so we're going to look at this little dial here because this is where you set the altitude for which you want to go. However, to activate this in the current state the DCS, mo uh, DCS uh, Mirage module is, you'll have to do a couple of things. First, you need to set the uh, altitude within 1000 feet of uh, where you currently are. So we're currently at 13,600 feet. So let's go and set this to first here. This is 10,000 feet. This is 1000 feet and this is 100 feet. So we can set here, for example, 20,000 feet, 10,000 feet. We can increase to, let's say, 15,000 feet. And now we are within 1,000 feet, roughly 1,000 feet, uh, plus minus our current uh, altitude. I will now climb above 5 degrees, this is important, above 5 degrees, activate autopilot, and now acti activate altitude select. The airplane will now try to move to 15,000 feet. Now, if I change this, for example, I go down to, or I increase this to 19,000 feet. The aircraft will now climb or descend, depending on what number we have set here. So let's go down to 9,000 feet. You will see the star will move, and the aircraft will try to descend to that altitude. Once the aircraft has descended and leveled out, it will switch its altitude select mode to altitude hold mode. Uh, let's go back up to 19,000 feet so we don't crash into the mountains. The issue with this uh, mode is that it only works when you do it the way I just showed you. Uh, set this dial first to within 1000 feet of your current altitude, climb uh, above 5 degrees and then activate it. I'm just going to show you where I clicked what happens uh, when you don't follow that procedure. I'm going to turn off the autopilot and we're going to turn around here again. 
So let's say we have set the altitude for 19,000 feet, a perfectly reasonable altitude to fly the Mirage 2000C on, I think at least. So let's just activate autopilot and look what happens if I just push the altitude uh, select button here. It refuses to activate. According to manual, this is uh, expected behavior and once I push this button one more time it should activate. It doesn't. The only way to activate this is if you are placing this one at, let's see, we're currently 16,000 feet. So let's zoom in here and I'm just going to change this to 17,000 feet. Deactivate the autopilot. Climb above, 5 degree climb. Activate the autopilot and then activate altitude select. And now it works. And if I'm very quick here I can start changing my altitude. So let's say I want to go back up to 19,000 feet, which is a perfectly reasonable altitude to want to fly your Mirage in. So now the autopilot will climb. The cool thing is that the um, uh, trim left and trim right buttons still work the same way if you are in altitude select mode. So let's say we want to descend to 5,000 feet. We can push this one to zero, push this one down to five. And then we can use our trimmer button to decide a heading for our aircraft. Let's say we want to go heading to seven zero. We move the trimmer down to two seven zero release it and now the aircraft will continue to descend and turn until it reaches um, 270 then it will fly straight and continue flying straight and, and then level out once it's reached its target altitude. So, so for the final mode we need to be lined up using the ILS for approach. The final mode is autopilot uh, landing mode or approach hold mode which will basically fly the final approach for your aircraft. So we're fairly well lined up with the ILS right now and I'm going to activate autopilot and then I'm going to activate autopilot approach hold mode. And during this time it's very important that you yourself have control over the throttle and accelerate and deaccelerate uh, when it's necessary to maintain a decent speed. You don't want to stall the aircraft and crash because the autopilot is not going to give two fucks about uh, you if you uh, deliberately stall your aircraft. So anyway, as you can see now the aircraft uh, or the autopilot will now fly the approach for me. Uh, following uh, the little box here and being aligned up with the ILS. Of course uh, the autopilot cannot land completely by itself. Uh, once we're close enough to the runway the autopilot will disengage and the yellow light will appear here showing that it's in the standby mode and you'll have to perform the touchdown by yourself. So it's important that uh, you uh, know at least how to land the aircraft before you're using this mode. Uh, for more information on how using and setting up the ILS and aligning your aircraft with the airfield using the ILS, please check my previous tutorials where I give a complete uh, rundown on how to effectively land the Mirage with the different uh, modes that they have. So right now I'm just going to perform a nice touchdown. And as always, uh, unless you have something better to do, keep your hand, uh, hands on the throttle and stick, uh, even though the autopilot is uh, engaged. It's important to keep an eye out here and see when the autopilot uh, disengages itself. Because I have had moments where it disengages itself right as it's starting to turn or change a little bit of its heading to align itself with the runway. Uh, so it's uh, important that you keep an eye out so you don't end up doing something stupid or the autopilot don't end up leaving you in a bad situation and you think it's going to sort itself out automatically. So you see it's turning a little bit here and there uh, the autopilot is disengaged and now we are on our own. And we're just going to touch down here. Uh, fairly well I think, just very easily touching the aircraft down. Oh, a little bit bouncy. But it's fine, we're done on the ground and we're gonna break. That's uh, basically a complete rundown on how to operate the different uh, autopilot modes in the Mirage 2000C. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, there will be some change or leaks and explanation in the uh, manual for how to use the altitude select uh, uh, mode which I think is kind of the most useful mode since you can easily alter the altitude of your aircraft uh, automatically by using this little uh, uh, panel here. Uh, thank you so much for watching and if you uh, enjoyed this video please uh, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing and if I did something wrong or mentioned something wrong please leave a comment down below explaining if I did something wrong or if you like this type of tutorials.
Once more, thank you for watching and I hope you see you guys soon again. Goodbye.